So the going into the forest was kind of a pandemic inspired topic. I grew up in the woods in New Hampshire and woods are very different than forests. Forests have that dark unknown quality to it. Forests are places you can get lost. Forests are place of discovery. You know, forests are the place where all like the Grimm's fairy tales take place. You know, there's a lot of unknown, there's uncertainty, there's fear. And for me, making art is very much about creating a beneficial uh, mental environment for myself. I had a lot of childhood trauma growing up and I really like to create kind of safe places, places with abundance and security and places that you wanna be in. And so for me, the, the pandemic, it, creating artwork was very much about sort of being able to control how I felt about things. So the larger pieces, the red ones in particular from this show, um, were actually begun in Mexico. I've been going for the last oh, seven years down there and painting for a month in the month of February and staying at this really sweet little family run Mexican hotel right on the beach. And I take um, paper, I use Reeves BFK printmaking paper, the same paper that I do for my monotypes and I coat them with a, um, a red oxide ground. So, and then I paint directly on them outside, observing what I'm seeing in the boat tail grackles flying by the almond trees. Uh, The nurse stump for me is about renewal, about rebirth, regrowth. It's about natural cycles. It's about life after death and decay. It's about rightness in the universe. And they're very much forest theme. And I, for me, they also really refer back to ecology and ecological balance and having a rightness in nature. And so for me, there's a lot of healing energy in that kind of imagery, and it's something in all of my work. I really hope to convey that to the viewer. I try to make places of healing. I love birds because I bring movement into things. And since a lot of them are started out of doors, it's just the more about being present in nature and things flitting in and out and responding to your environment while you're painting. And I always think a bird visitation is kind of special and they are very interactive. And I, one time I was painting um, and I was painting a blue jay and it came down and it perched on the edge of the panel while I was painting it and then it, dove into my palette. You know, I had a little bit of red and it got it on its beak. And then it got super mad at me because it felt like it'd been misled and it flew over and wiped it all over my chair. <laughs> so yeah, so it's just, it's more about engagement, but I just also love that, you know, they're, they're intermediaries between heaven and earth. So there's kind of a, a soul function too. And for jays, in some Native American traditions, they're soul animals because they're blue against blue. So they're about seeing beyond. So every bird has that kind of, you know, a little bit of connotation for me. To, the, the grackles are very much, the Mexican grackles are very much about a sense of place and about sharing the world and interactions. Ball of yarn is finding your way out of situations. Sometimes they're tools for me. It's like, okay, I'm in this space and I've got a ball of yarn. And there's the whole story of, um, you know, winding the yarn through the maze so the hero can slay the minotaur and find his way out again. So there's solutions, you know, rope's the same thing. It gives you ability to problem solve in a different way. 
Or and it can be about having what you need, about having water, about having food, about having abundance. You know, I, I studied with uh, Philip Guston at BU, I think back in, ooh, 77. And he was always very much about what you removed, what wasn't there, was every bit as important as what's there. So I tend to start by loosely sketching, whether it be a monotype and, or a painting, and I'm finding my imagery. I'm not set, I don't have a complete idea. I'm, I'm like responding to what's there, I'm finding my imagery, I'm erasing, maybe I'm using more red to kind of start over and freshen up the surface again. Mm -hmm. So it's very much about composing too, mm -hmm. and having the right amount of things and not too many things and having balance. So I'm always striving for some kind of balance and harmony by you know putting things down and removing and shifting. This tree is planted outside of my studio. I actually planted it 30 years ago. And it's a dwarf golden delicious tree. And I've kind of, you know, shaped and pruned and this and that, but I've never worked on it till this year because of the early months of the pandemic, it was pretty much, you know, kind of staying home and very much, you know, focused in the studio. So I, I started the first one being the yellow one with the blossoms on it. And then I moved on to um, kind of a little bit, the apples being set. And the apples, the one with the apples, it's also an Aesop's fairy tale. It's um, the fairy tale about, the, or the tale about the um, crow is lost in the desert and it's very, very thirsty and it can't find anything to drink. But finally it comes across this picture and it tries to get in the water, but it's afraid it's going to topple in. So instead it takes stones and it picks it up and it speaks one by one and raises the water level until finally it can drink. So it's a very, very old image for, you know, kind of, um, dealing with adversary, creative problem solving, industriousness, you know, kind of sticking to it. And then with this, I kind of got started on it and then I was excited about doing them. And so then when the snow came, it was like, oh wow, you know, this is not something I get all the time. It's this opportunity to go paint outside in the snow. I actually really love that, and um, you know, you, this gallery and have sold an incredible number of pieces to hospitals. So I, my work is in major hospitals all through the Northwest, um, and I just get incredible feedback. You know, so oftentimes I'll just get, you know, people I don't even often know that well. They'll you know, email me photos of themselves in front of a piece and I'll be like, I, I was feeling really hesitant about the surgery mm -hmm. and I came in and your piece was in the waiting room and I knew everything was gonna be all right. So it, it's, it's really, it's, it's a very powerful situation. And I guess I had a real empathy for that too. I had a, um, a childhood illness where I was hospitalized for a month. And um, you know, so I know the importance of environment and I know for me personally, the whole connection with nature is just huge. And so for me, if I can bring that feeling of sense of really looking and appreciating inside and give it to people when they really need it or to create more harmony and joy in their home environment, it's huge. And so for me, it's like every time I'm, I'm presenting a flower, I'm presenting something, it's because I've observed it and things are miraculous. I mean, things around us are just incredible. So for me, it's a chance to take that in, to really look at it, to find pleasure in it, to enjoy it. You know, and we're just, God, we're just all so lucky to be surrounded by this incredible beauty. So I wrote a poem for all of us. 
for this pandemic year for us, particularly in Portland. And also it relates to the imagery in this show. Um, going into the forest, the pandemic year, we are walking into the dangerous unknown, habits and comforts left behind, old patterns shattered. Going into the dark forest of a fairy tale, Hansel and Gretel leaving behind crumbs, the birds are quickly eating them. There is no way to go back now. I am looking for the crumb trail. I am searching for clues to follow. There is no flour in the stores to bake more bread. We are not free until we all are free. Helicopters looping over our house, noisily pushing down hot winds. 11 is the hour when the flash bombs begin. Restless energy drawn to the center of town and tear gas in the air. Going into the forest to paint, napping in the elk's bed of trampled grass. I'm dreaming elk dreams. I am running with a herd. All walls dissolve in front of our unstoppable momentum. Nurse locks decaying in dappled sunlight. Foxgloves sway, buzzed by hummingbirds. Sitting outside under the walnut tree, the witch has the oven door open. Breaking bread with a few friends, Lamps hanging in branches light the way. Federal officers grab protesters off the street into unmarked vans. Living in a strange city. In my studio, painting harmony and abundance, great tail grackles and trees in a sheltered bay. The flowered filled air is warm and fragrant. Painting the worlds I want it to be with equity for all. Outside, trying to erase graffiti with a can of gray paint. Houseless sleeping in tents, trash on the ground. Going into the forest to paint, sleeping on the side of the mountain, touching the moon, drinking the meltwater of glaciers, feeding my crumbs with joy to a stellar jay, breathing in thin clear air with no cloth barrier between. So many things I know, but I cannot explain. Then, then the forests are burning. Inside the house, masked and quiet, inhaling the gray haze of ancient trees, painting in the filtered basement air, red sky, yellow sky, and red sun, darkness during the day, the birds are hiding, the protesters on pause, the worst air quality on the planet. Going into the forest at the edge of the ocean, a flock of cedar waxwings gather berries, washing off the burnt smell from my skin, inhaling the salt-kissed air. Going to the ocean, looking at the horizon line, Ruth Bader Ginsburg has died. The crows land in an old apple tree on their way to roost. Blossoms become apples that have already been eaten. Milkweed pods send out seeds of hope carried on frail filaments by the breeze, food for the monarch butterflies. Rolling up bread comes into balls, tossing them to insistent raven on the trail. Seems unlucky not to share. A divisive election mirrors a dark history. Going through the forest and scrambling up the volcano, snow pure and white covering treacherous rocks. The summit is hidden in clouds and high winds, the Capitol building is stormed by a violent mob. Snowed in, the city shut down, power out, forcing us out of our careful isolation, sheltering together cautiously for warmth. Then the tinkling sound of ice releasing from the branches. Going into the forest, light and darker interwoven. Driving east to get beyond the low gray sky the clever girl Gretel turns her witch capture to ash. She finds the hidden treasure in the way back. Magpies swoop white against blue sky. I nibble on the sour, new, soft green tips of a fir tree. Cherry trees in San Francisco cut down before they bloom. Anti-Asian hate crimes on the rise. Three charges of guilty in Minneapolis. The bush tit begins its nest again. There needs to be a vaccine against violence. Going through the forest, climbing up the mountain, listening to the sound of water running deep below, sleeping on snow, 
warm hand touching smooth cold, feeling the raven's broom wings move high above me, knowing for a quick minute, I know for a quick minute how to fly.